take a moment to jot down what you believe are the top three problems in our society today. If you need more time, you can pause the video. The mass media plays a key role in what we define as a social problem. Oftentimes, we are asked, what are the major social problems in our society today? And we will, we will respond according to what the media has portrayed as our major social problems. Go back to the list you just created of the top three social problems our society is facing today. Now think about what you have recently seen on the news or read in the newspaper or online. Do you see a correlation between the two? In a study of college students, the question was posed, what are the major social problems facing humanity today? The responses from the college students mirrored those highlighted by the mass media within the past week. The most frequent answers were the state of the economy, global warming, terrorism, AIDS, child abuse, poverty, war, crime, the environment, and same-sex marriage. This semester, we will not only discuss social problems, but discuss possible solutions. A societal goal should be to be more proactive in our approach to social problems rather than reactive. Our society has taken a reactive approach in most instances. What this means is that our society usually responds to social problems after the fact, rather than taking preventative measures to ensure that a particular issue does not become a social problem. Several times this semester, you will be required to provide suggestions for alleviating the social problems we are discussing. Each time a sociologist conducts research, he or she goes through specific steps which are noted as the research process. The following are all of the steps in the social research process. First, choose a topic. Second, conduct a literature review. This means that you read and summarize the previous research on your specific topic. Next, state your hypothesis. This is a tentative statement. It expresses the relationship between two or more factors and is often framed as an if-then statement. For example, if you spend more hours studying in this course, then you are likely to receive a higher grade. Next, you choose a research method. Some of the most common methods of social research are surveys, fieldwork, experiments, and case studies. Next, you gather the data and analyze the data that you have collected. Finally, you share your findings publicly with others by publishing articles or presenting your findings. Before research can be published in academic journals, it is subjected to a peer review. This means that it is evaluated and critiqued by other experts in the field. This review is what makes journal articles so much more authoritative and credible than other sources like newspapers, magazines, and books. Typically, researchers of social problems are looking for cause and effect relationships. Causality means that one factor has some type of effect on another factor or produces a change in some other factor. In some studies, researchers have found that two factors are correlated, associated with one another, but not necessarily caused by the other factor. One example would be prostitution and sexual abuse. A large proportion of prostitutes are also victims of sexual abuse, but that does not mean that sexual abuse causes prostitution or vice versa. Research leads us in the direction of solutions. The goal is that research will help us to understand a social problem, which will then lead to prevention and will result in intervention. Should we solve the social problem? With each solution to a social problem, there are costs. Some things to consider are, will there be fewer resources available to solve other social problems? Does a solution to one social problem create yet another social problem? Is a particular solution even feasible? For example, if we effectively eliminate prostitution and drug dealing, what would happen to the people who earn a living that way? Would they turn to other crimes? How could solving a social problem in this instance create other problems?
In the next sections, we will be discussing our three main social theories and how each of them specifically relates to the sociological study of social problems. According to functionalism, society is a social system composed of parts that work together to benefit the whole, like how the human body is composed of parts with various functions that work together to keep the whole body alive. Functionalists view a social problem as the failure of some part of the system to fulfill its function, which interferes with the smooth functioning of the system. Social problems occur when some part of the system fails. This dysfunction is usually because of rapid social change. According to conflict theory, society consists of groups of people competing with one another within the same social system. Conflict theorists view social problems as the natural and inevitable outcome of interest groups competing for scarce or limited resources. Social problems occur when authority and power are used by the elite to exploit weaker groups. According to symbolic interactionism, society is people's patterns of behavior which are always changing. Symbolic interactionists think that whatever a group decides is a social problem is a social problem for that group. Social problems occur when one set of definitions becomes accepted and competing views are rejected. Now we will apply each of the three social theories to one social problem, teen pregnancy. Functionalists viewing the issue of teen pregnancy would likely say that the institution of family has faltered in fulfilling its function of monitoring the sexual behavior of children. This dysfunction could be attributed to the rapid introduction of women into the workforce over the past several decades and the high number of families headed by a single parent. In both of these scenarios, adults are away from the home more and children are supervised less, which provides teens with more opportunity to get into trouble. Conflict theorists would point out that teen pregnancy is more prevalent in lower social classes. Children and adults in lower social classes are less educated and have fewer resources and limited access to medical care and contraception. Without the knowledge and means to prevent or terminate unwanted pregnancies, the teen pregnancy rate is predictably high. Symbolic interactionists would examine what pregnancy and parenthood mean to teenagers. In some cases, girls may actually want to get pregnant because they view having a child as a status symbol or a source of love and affection. Boys may also view fathering chi a child as a sign of their masculinity. The way the community deals with these pregnancies can also vary depending on whether they view teen moms as promiscuous and irresponsible or brave and self-sacrificing. This chart reviews the key ideas associated with each of the three sociological theories. You should be very familiar with these before you take the quizzes this week and throughout the course. This completes the lecture for this week. If you have any questions, please post in the Q&A forum on the discussion board. Feel free to answer each other's questions posted in the Q&A forum. The first student to answer another student's question correctly in the Q&A will receive extra credit if you beat me to it. For this week's activity, go to Blackboard, Lecture Materials, Week 2, and click on the hyperlink in the activity folder. The link will take you to an online survey measuring individual beliefs about social problems. When you have completed the survey, the confirmation message will provide you another link. Follow it to open the findings document to see how your answers compare to the national sample. Did you find that your answers were similar to what the majority of citizens in the U.S. noted as social problems? Please complete the survey this week.